in this nitty gritty prime time let's play live stream we're going to be playing american mahjong at mahjong time mahjong time is a very robust platform there are five ways to play the game they have tournaments and marathons and you can also play in a guild if you want to know more about it just send me an email i'll be more than happy to explain it or send you an email where you can find information about it they have a 30-day vip trial that i would invite you to check out i am an affiliate partner there so i will get a small commission if you decide to subscribe and i appreciate the support i want to give a quick shout out to our moderators today thank you for helping moderate the chat this is a nitty-gritty format so please let's keep the socialization to a bare minimum, if any at all. If you prefer gameplay with commentary and socialization, you might join us on Friday nights at 6 p.m. Eastern time. Otherwise, we'll stick with the nitty gritty in these Monday double headers. Today's topic is game theory, profiling players. I hope that you enjoy the session. Welcome to the live stream. I'm going to share my screen and we'll get started with a presentation and then we'll do gameplay with commentary and hopefully we'll be able to talk about it a little bit we'll be playing with humans so i will look for opportunities to talk about playing styles and this is all pretty new so i am still learning more and more about using these concepts so bear with me uh because it's all fairly new to me as well so let's see, let me uh, get my slideshow ready and then we'll get started. And also I just need to step away for a second because I forgot my drink in the kitchen. So I need to do that real quick too. So let me go get that. I'm sure I'm gonna need a, a sip of something as we go, because I'll be doing a lot of talking. Good stuff, I hope you enjoy it. Okay, so the presentation is ready. Let me go ahead and present my screen. Here we go, profiling players. I'm just gonna uh, put up my avatar for a quick sec. I'll be right back. All right, I'm back. Sorry about that. Welcome, welcome to the live stream. Can you guys hear me okay? Let me just double check YouTube and make sure we're connected. Uh-oh. Mm. One moment, please. Here we go. All right. Can you? Oh, sound is good. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right. Sorry about all that. We're ready to go now. Okay. Profiling players. Are you ready? This is advanced. Nitty gritty prime time is for advanced topics. If you're a beginner, this will this may be a little bit overwhelming you're of course welcome to stick around just take it with a, a grain of salt and when you're ready to ramp up then consider adopting some of these concepts if you're an intermediate player on a fast track you'll be fine and advanced players i'm really hoping that you're going to love this content profiling players we're going to use poker psychology 
Poker's been studied since the late 1970s and many of the concepts can be adapted and applied to Mahjong. One such concept is identifying playing styles. So when I use the term profiling players, I don't mean it in a politically incorrect sense. This is actually a concept borrowed and adapted from poker psychology. Identifying a player's profile can be helpful because each one has characteristics and tendencies that can give insight into how a game may progress. So we're not going to put anyone in a box. It's going to be a fluid placement because as you'll see, people play differently in different circumstances. So let's dig into this idea and you can give me some feedback as we go. Mahjong, like poker, is a game of observation. Fully reading the table, like reading hands, is part of that. It also requires you to read individual playing styles, the people sitting at the table. So reading hands, looking at the discards, watching exposures to try to figure out what your opponents are playing. That's part of it. The other part of it, though, is the players themselves. If you pay attention, you can gather information that can be used to gain a competitive and strategic advantage at the table. So let's look at these styles. There are two important variables to consider. First, a player's personality makes them unique and their playing style may change based on their skills. So when a, someone is starting out, they're probably gonna be a little bit hesitant. Maybe they'll feel a little bit insecure about their abilities. So they may start out as a, a, a more, let's see what would be a, a good word, just a, a hesitant or quiet player. But as they gain confidence, they may play more and more assertively as they gain, you know, develop their skills and also learn how to apply strategies. Also, a player can adjust their playing style based on their opponents at the table. So for example, if I'm playing with a bunch of beginners, I might change the way I play. If I'm playing with advanced players, well, I'm going to play hard and fast. So I, I might pull back a little bit if I play with beginners because I don't want to blow them out of the water. I don't want to win every hand. I don't want to take that kind of advantage. So I might pull back. Maybe I'll play singles and pairs hands so that I, I give the other players time to develop their hand by playing maybe a more difficult hand as an example. Also, the strength of a hand can change the way somebody will play the game. If I'm playing and I have a weak hand, meaning maybe I have gaps or I have pairs where I need Kongs, I may play a little more passively than if I'm playing a hand where I have no gaps and I have no weaknesses, I'm probably gonna play assertively and push to win. Also, the format of the game is going to affect how someone may play the game. And this would be the comparison of playing socially versus competitively. So for example, when I play socially, I chit chat and I am more relaxed, more conversational. But when I play in a tournament, I'm very stoic. I don't say much at all, especially commenting about the game in play. Absolutely not. And I really don't do that when I play socially either. Sometimes I might let a little bit of a body language or maybe a verbal tell. I, I might squeak one out. But for the most part, I'm pretty quiet when I play the game, but it could change depending on if I'm playing socially or competitively. So these are the variables that you want to consider when you're 
identifying the playing styles of people at the table. They're, who you're playing with, the strength of the hand, and then also the format of the game. Keep all these things in mind. And then, of course, the player's personality. You have introverts and extroverts, so they may add a little bit of flavor or variance to playing styles. So think about these variables. There are distinguishing factors on two spectrums, or really it's a continuum. I've been sharing this concept with a couple of people, and it's been pointed out to me that it's actually a continuum and not a spectrum. So I'll be updating this particular presentation. But for the time being, we're just going to call it a spectrum because that's what we have on the slide. Oh, actually, on these two, it is a spectrum. We're going to get to a continuum later. So uh, if we talk about luck versus skill, so I may be confusing these. Sorry, I'm right in knee deep in editing my next book, which has all this content in there. So I might be mixing my spectrums and continuums. So in this one, these are spectrums. So we have the flexibility spectrum. This is where you have fixed on one side and adaptive on the other. And a player is going to be somewhere along that spectrum. You may be on the more fixed side of the spectrum where maybe you pick a hand early. But you may also find a player in your group, for example, who plays more adaptive like I do, where I don't pick a hand until I run out of discards. So fixed, adaptive. That would be the flexibility spectrum. The next spectrum is a risk tolerance spectrum, where we have passive on one side and assertive on the other. So there are players who may be a little more conservative in their decision making. They, they don't want to take risks. For example, early in the game, they may hesitate to call a discard to make an exposure with two jokers. They may wait because they have a low risk tolerance, but then there are assertive players who will be willing to take risks. So for example, if I'm playing a strong hand, I may call a discard to make an exposure with two jokers. Or in the end game, if I feel confident that I have a good potential to win, I'm going to push to win and I might discard a risky tile. I have a low tolerance, or let's see, we have on the passive side would be low on the, um, let me see, the assertive side, they're going to have that ability to just take risk and not quiver at that. So low and high risk tolerance. So consider these things, the flexibility spectrum and the risk tolerance spectrum. So when you think about that, flexibility on the left and then risk tolerance on the bottom, and you place it on a chart, we have quadrants. So the bottom left is going to be a player who has a fixed passive style of play, and we're going to call that player a stingray. Then on the right of that player, still on the fixed uh, flexibility, we're, and, but even though they're, they play maybe with fixed style of play where they pick a hand early, they're, they're more assertive in their decision making. Their risk tolerance is uh, lower. It's a lower risk tolerance. So they're going to take risks. That would be a fixed assertive player. And we're going to call that one an orca style. Then when we get up to the flexibility, the higher end of the flexibility spectrum where we have adaptive players, adaptive yet passive, we have what we're going to call a dolphin. So they're going to be adaptive. They're not going to pick a hand. Oh my goodness. Hold on. Sorry about that. They're, they may not 
let's say that they they won't pick a hand early on, but they'll still hesitate a little bit on making decisions, especially if risk is involved. So they have an adaptive style of play, but they're still a passive uh, uh, on the um, risk tolerance scale or spectrum. And then we have the adaptive assertive, which would be the players who maybe don't pick a hand until they run out of discards. And then they also have an assertive style on the risk tolerance spectrum. So they're going to be more willing to take risks. We're going to call that one a shark. So we have uh, the fixed passive is a stingray. The fixed assertive is an orca. The adaptive passive is a dolphin. And the adaptive assertive is a shark. And these, this whole concept is based on poker psychology. Have you heard of a poker shark or a card shark? That's where this concept comes from, but it's been adapted. So does anybody have any questions so far? I just want to open it up to see if anybody has any questions. Okay, we're going to go next to the next one. Here are some examples of the tendencies that you might see with these playing styles. So if you see in the upper right corner, we have a bird's eye view of a game in play. This is after the Charleston. So a fixed style of play on the flexibility spectrum, we would have someone who would pick a hand from the dealt hand, and they're going to... So they're they're typically going to pick a hand during the Charleston, if not from the dealt hand, and they'll typically stay with it. And then we have somebody who will play on the adaptive side where they won't pick a hand until they run out of discards. So there's a little visual of the begin game spectrum. Fixed players tend to pick a hand early. Adaptive players tend to wait until they run out of discards before they pick a hand. Okay, next we have the middle game. This would be during the third, the second wall. So let's see, no, this is the third wall, middle game, third wall. On the risk tolerance spectrum, we would have passive players where they would maybe delay their first exposure, not only to control information, but also not risk losing a joker in an exposure in the begin or middle game. For the assertive players, they have the tendency to not be so affected by that risk because they, they typically will be willing to make an exposure knowing that they're going to risk those jokers because they just have that assertive style. They're, they're willing to push as opposed to wait or delay. In the end game, this is in with the fourth wall in play, you might see a passive player have this tendency to fold, break up their hand so that they don't discard a winning tile. Then you have assertive players who will be willing to play to win, even if there is risk. So those are the ideas around both the flexibility spectrum and the risk tolerance spectrum. And think about the way you play. Think about the thoughts that go through your head and maybe, maybe even the feelings that come up when you're making decisions on whether or not to call a discard to make an exposure. Is it too early? Is there going to be risk? You know, what are the feelings that come up as you're thinking about making these decisions to help you figure out what your style of play is. And then once you figure out your own style of play, you can then use that mindset to figure out the style of play of your opponents at the table and use that information to your advantage. And here's how you might be able to do that. We're going to look at each playing style and we're going to see the general characteristics likely tactics, advantages, disadvantages, and then maneuvers that you can use
to counteract their tactics. All right, here we go. So with the Stingray, this is the fixed passive player. This is the player who is risk averse. They're typically not non-competitive and they play in a, in a more of a state of uncertainty. And they, that is why they are risk averse because they're just not sure yet what's going to happen in the game. These are their likely tactics. They typically limit hands. Maybe they pick a hand before the Charleston uh, and then they stick with it during the Charleston or maybe in the early game, they'll pick a hand. They're slow to call a discard to make an exposure to delay commitment to a hand. And they may make exposures with jokers if there's minimal, minimal exchange potential. Like let's say somebody throws a tile and perhaps if they have a pung with a joker that they need to make, they may let that tile go so that they're not showing the joker early in the game. And they may wait for the second tile to be discarded and then call it to make an exposure to minimize that risk of losing the joker. Because then there's only one more tile that can take that joker. So that would be another example. Another is that they will typically switch to defense early. And these, again, are likely tactics and general characteristics. So here are some advantages. Decision making is simple because it has a the player uses a narrow focus. That's an advantage. Kind of takes the pressure off. Low anxiety. Low stress. Then the disadvantages could be, though, that they may miss out on needed tiles because they delay. They wait. They also may not be able to switch to hands because they delay. They may miss opportunities to make exposures or take a, a discard that goes down. That delay may make it difficult to switch because their tiles will go down before they're ready to commit. Also, this style of play, it, because of these disadvantages, is going to be least likely to win. Here are some maneuvers that you can use against this player. Play assertively. Typically, a fixed passive player may feel intimidated even by playing with someone who is assertive. Somebody, I don't want to use the term aggressive, but that's for all intents and purposes a, synon a synonym. Also, you can use hand reading to figure out what they're playing. And really, hand reading applies to figuring out, or, or it's a maneuver that you can use for all playing styles, but more so with a fixed passive player. So with this player, middle game sabotage is another good way to maneuver against this particular player if you monitor their discards and their exposures. All right, so now we're going to look at the dolphin. With a dolphin, this would be the player with an adaptive passive style. They're risk averse because that's that would be the passive part of this playing style. They're non-competitive and they play in a state of caution. And typically that speaks to the adaptive side of this style of play. Risk averse, non-competitive, they play in a state of caution. Here are their likely tactics. They typically don't pick a hand till there are tiles outside their category. So basically not pick a hand until they run out of discards. They're slow to call for a discard to make an exposure because they don't want to commit to a hand. They're quick to call for an exposure to expedite hand development after they've made that first exposure. So the first exposure they may delay, but once they're expediting development, they're going to play assertively. Also, they may make exposures where there's minimal opportunity for joker exchange. They'll wait until maybe the second discard. And then they typically will switch to defense early. 
the advantages would be that this player, because they have an adaptive style, they've got lots of options and great flexibility. They typically don't commit to a hand early. The disadvantage would be that they could miss out on needed tiles because they delay, especially in the early game. They may wait to call a discard. The maneuvers against them would be to play assertively, hand reading, and again, middle game sabotage. All right, so let's talk about the Orca. Risk tolerant. This player is typically going to play hard and fast. They're competitive and they play in a state of belief. They have that confidence in the game and in themselves and sometimes to a detriment, actually. Here are their likely tactics. They pick a hand before the Charleston. So when they get their dealt hand or maybe in the early game, and then they'll stick with it and drive with that one hand. They are quick to call tiles for a discard to make an exposure to expedite hand development. And they make exposures with jokers regardless of the risk of exchange. So they're okay. They're okay with making exposure with jokers. Uh, let's see. Am I? I need to close my blinds. I see I have a line here. But anyhow, they're, they're more... Uh, risk tolerance. So they're okay with making exposures with those jokers. Usually if you see somebody who makes an early exposure like a like an, a Kong with two jokers, they're probably an assertive player. So a shark or an orca. They also could be a dolphin who has a really strong hand. So you want to think about all these variables when you're trying to figure out the style of play of your opponents. Orcas typically play to win if they're waiting for one tile in the end game. They'll push. They will push to win, even if that means discarding something risky. The advantages for an orca would be decision making is simple because they have a narrow focus. They typically pick a hand early so they can zero in on that one hand and keep an eye on discards for that one option. The disadvantages they could get stuck if they commit or too early. Also, they could limit their flexibility or their switchability depending on how early they commit with an exposure. The maneuvers against them would be hand reading, middle game sabotage, or an early fold. So for example, if you're playing with someone who's assertive and they're playing to win, if your own potential is limited or affected based on exposures and discards, you might fold your hand and hoard their tiles. Basically sabotage their potential by keeping their tiles, knowing if you know what they need. Also, you can keep an eye on discards and their exposures to see if you can maybe disqualify them from the game. Those are good maneuvers against a fixed assertive player or and orca. Now let's talk about the shark. Let me close my blinds real quick. Okay, hopefully that's better. All right, so sharks, sharks at the table. We have the general characteristics of being risk tolerant, they're very competitive, and they play in a state of confidence. This would be the shark. Their likely tactics are to gather tiles and not pick a hand till they run out of discards. They're quick to call discards to make exposures to expedite hand development, especially if they have a strong hand. They'll even make exposures with jokers. They're okay to take that risk. They don't, they're risk tolerant. So they're not bothered by risking an exposure with jokers or maybe discarding a risky tile. They typically are risk tolerant. So they'll push to win in the end game. So here, would you clarify yourself as a shark? Yes. Yep, I'm a shark. I am a shark, but I will tone it down if I'm playing with beginners 
or if I'm in a social setting, I may change the way I play a little bit. Okay, so the advantages, lots of options and flexibility. That's because they have an adaptive, uh, on the flexibility spectrum, that adaptive approach. The disadvantages is they could get stuck due to an early commitment. Typically, anyone who plays assertively, they may rush to expose as opposed to making decisions based on that calculated risk. They may be more, um, let's see, what word should I, uh, let's see, they may act just to expedite and not really think about the the risk of being locked in early. They want to expedite the hand development early to stay ahead of everybody else because they're assertive, but they could be painting themselves in a corner or needing jokers on the back end because maybe their tiles are being going to be discarded and they're not quite ready to call. So maybe they'll commit to a Kong, but they're not ready to call on their puns or their other blocks. So there is some risk there. There's risk for every playing style. So it's just a matter of the decision making, the skills and strategies that are used as to whether or not they're going to play well. Okay, the maneuvers against them would be hand reading, middle game sabotage, and early fold would be a good maneuver against a shark. And then also disqualification because a shark at times could accept the risk of, for example, waiting on a pear tile. Maybe they have all they need except that one pear tile or maybe a single that would then end up in a pure Kong. So you want to look for opportunities to disqualify these players. So here, here's the process that you'll use when you try to identify the playing styles of your opponents or even yourself if you've not thought about these things you want to first observe then identify their playing style which one of the four you think that the players would be and then interpret their actions to anticipate how the game would progress basically how their actions their tactics their their own uh, personality, their playing style affects the game. You can, you can interpret that and anticipate it and even counteract what they're doing to help yourself gain an advantage. Adjust your tactics accordingly is the idea here. Observe your opponents, identify their playing style, interpret their actions to anticipate how the game will progress and then adjust your tactics to gain an advantage at the table. That's the process. And this is why this is an advanced topic, because it's a lot to manage. You're observing your opponents while developing your own hand, and you're thinking about all these things. There's a lot to manage in that analysis, but that is how it's done. And in the end, the smarter you play, the luckier you'll be. So let's play Mahjong and let's see if we can demonstrate some of this. Now, when you play online, you have limited visibility into playing styles because we're playing on the computer. We don't have the benefit of seeing our opponents. We can't see their mannerisms. We can't see their micro expressions we can't see their body language or their tells with tiles but there are a few things that we can see and when you play online that would be timing so hesitations for example or when a player picks a tile from the wall and it takes them a few seconds to make a discard and then what is that discard is it a fresh tile or is it a risky tile so you can use some ver some of the uh, tells at the table when you play online, 
you can use that information to help you identify their playing style. So we're going to try to do that when we play at Mahjong time. I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. Yes, luck flavor favors the prepared. That's true. Okay, so let me share my screen. We're going to use this layout up here. All right, we don't want to join a, a marathon here. So we're going to go here and we'll start a new table. All right, here we go. So we may have to wait a little bit. I'm not going to play in a marathon today. Okay, this won't take too long. Here we go, first game. Let's see what we can learn about these players at the table. Just remember, Stingray. We have the Stingray, an orca, a dolphin, and a shark. Try to visualize that chart. So Stingray is... Um, Let's see, they are fixed passive. The orca is adaptive passive. The dolphin is fixed assertive, and the shark is adaptive assertive. That's how it works. Okay, so we have a lot of two, three, four, two, three, four, five, even. I think maybe this dragon can go. All right, here we go. So far, everybody's passing pretty quickly. So I would say everybody at the table is confident at the moment. Okay, so we have a couple of big numbers, but mostly mostly little numbers. Three, four, two, three, four, five. So let's pass the seven and the eight. Okay, now we have to make some choices. We have three, four, two, three, four, five, two, three in dots. Two, three, two, three, four, four. I would not pass like numbers. Three, four, three, four. Let's pass the five crack, I think, here. We're kind of waiting for a deciding tile. I'm kind of thinking we do have a hand with no gaps. Two, three, four, four. Okay, so here's a four dot. We have a lot of two, three, four. We have three tiles to pass. We could maybe keep that dragon for 3-4 dragon, but I think I'd rather hold number tiles rather than a dragon. See if we can get a multiple in here with a number tile. 2-3-4 of some kind we're playing. We have 3-4-3-4, three, four, three, four, two sets of 2-3. We could maybe even play a year hand. Okay, now we have two multiples, two, three. So we picked the right range. Here's two, three, three, four, two, three, four. We definitely want to keep going. So we're going to have to make a choice. We need three tiles to pass. Two, three, three bam pair. One, two, three, three. We have no one. I think we should let the seven go with the fork, uh, four dot. And then we have to make a choice. The two crack, maybe. I'm thinking we can do one, two, three, three. If we can get a one dot, that would be awesome. We may be able to try for a pair hand, or not a pair hand, but a year hand. We could also do two, three, four mix suit Kongs, fifth hand down on the right. Fifth hand down on the right. I would just keep gathering. We have a number of categories we could be in, year, consecutive run. We could even do like numbers with threes. And now we could even do little odds. So here's a one, three, five, nine dot. We definitely don't need the nine dot. We're much stronger with two, three, four. I think I would let the five crack go. We have two, three four, five, like numbers with threes in there too. Okay, we have another multiple, the four crack. So I probably would commit with two, three, four. Mixu Kongs, no gaps. That's the shark in me. 
two, three, four. And then let's pass one of each suit here. So we're going to leverage these multiples, two, three, four, no gaps, no keepers. So let's pass, let's, let's see what our opponent wants. Oh, look, we have the three, four back in here. We have three tiles we can pass. I like to be reactive in the Charleston because I don't like to give away information. I don't want to seem, I don't want to come across anxious. So I typically delay my offer. They want two. So we can pass two, one and an eight. Oh, okay. Now here's a red flag. Somebody's passing one, one tile. Okay, we have a three, four. So, wow, we ended up with nine look, dots. We have three, four, two, three, four, five. The green dragon One can go, character. I think. But we have a good assortment here of two, three, Eight five dots. of some kind. So, let's let the green dragon green go. Dragon. Nine bamboo. I think our strongest potential is two, three, four Mixu Kongs. Two, three, four, Mixu Kongs looks pretty good. Green Dragon. Excuse me. Two, three, four, Mixu Kongs looks pretty good. Eight Bamboos. There's a Keeper. Three Bam. Six Characters. Two, three, four. I think I'd probably commit. Six Characters. Two, three, four. We can Kong two of the blocks. We can calm the three Nine and then the two or the four, but not both. So we still need three to draw. Bamboos. Okay, let's calm. So this is where this assertive player would go for it because we're playing a hand with no gaps. Calm. So let's now throw the, let's see, let's do the five bam. Five bamboos. All right, so we have a pure Kong out. No risk there. Eight done. We are revealing information, of course. First to expose is an in, could be an indicator of a player with a strong hand, but it could also Red be an dragon. indicator of a, a shark or a dolphin with a strong Eight hand. Wind. Seven. We do wind. have a risk with our flower. But I'm willing to take that risk because there are eight flowers and we have a good chance of drawing at least Red one dragon. from the wall. There's our keeper. Four We're set now. We can Kong the two, Kong the four, Seven and be ready characters. on a flower. Of course, it would be ideal to pick a flower from the wall because it is still risky if somebody hmm. has a, a Kong, of a pure Kong of flowers, that's going to be very limiting for us. One character. So we're dots. It's feeling a little bit tight because One of that, that flower. Two bamboos. Seven characters. Oh, they got a joker. West wind. We need a flower. We can relax now. All right, Three so now, now we can just glide right into the finish line. Let's hope. <laughs> That's the plan. So we're ready to One come. Character. And, of course, we want to try to limit our exposures. It would be better bamboos. for us to draw. Hi, Deborah. Okay, thanks for uh, popping in, Deborah. Okay, West. I don't – there's only uh, – well, West we have an East wind. and a West out, so – Somebody could be playing wins here. Somebody's got Two wins, characters. or there wouldn't have been a hesitation. Three dots. So we don't, okay, we're not going to take that, of course. We don't really have a sense of what these our opponents are like at the moment because they're concealed. Seven characters. It could be an indicator that they're passive players. They're not Three risking dots. making exposures. The two on the right, and uh, the right and the left. East and West. They may be our passive players. Who knows? It's kind of hard to tell with one game. This is why it's challenging Seven to play dots. in a tournament because you're, you typically play four, four hands. So 
if you've got to be able to assess your opponent within one Line game off. to determine their playing style so that you can leverage that information Seven in the next dots. three games. So you've got to really be mindful in that very first game to try to figure out their playing style. If you're playing in Seven person dots. online, it's really difficult Flower. to do. Okay. We're going to pass. We're waiting for a four crack to win or a joker. Sound and we are semi stealth mode. Just one exposure. There's no way hmm. for someone to figure out what we're playing here. Eight bamboos. And I'm going to, I'm going to push to win, even if I draw a risky tile, because we're ready. And we're ready even before the middle of the game. 56 Sound tiles. Win. We were ready a, a few picks ago. So I would push to win here. Seven bamboo. Which means I'm I'm going to be okay with taking risks. This would be another example of a shark at the Seven table. Bamboo. They're willing to take those risks. So here's Flower. there was an example of a delay. So there was a little hesitancy there. Maybe they were looking at the discards for flowers. They have two. So we have a winner across from us. We were ready. Five, five, six, seven, eight, Hong Kong. Well done. Well done there. Okay, now here's a player playing two, three, four with East and West, probably. They have our four crack. Over here, we have a North and South with a run. They're one away as well. So we, we got close. Let's play again. Okay, we've got Joe at the table. Hello, Joe. I see Chris at the table too. Okay, let's see what we have to work with this time. Our only multiple is the green dragon. I probably would see if we can make a year hand work. This is another example of a shark is that they are willing to, they have a big vision of where hand can go. Even though we have no flowers, we have a pair of green dragons. We could maybe do, for example, that year hand third one down. It's a bit risky because we have no flowers. That is where that risk tolerance comes in. Risk tolerant. Sharks are risk tolerant. Let's see. Another thing we could do, though, is a 2 8 dragon hand. So let's keep the eights. Let's see about keeping the eights. We may be able to do the two eight dragon hand, second hand from the bottom. Someone gave us like numbers with twos. Well, okay. Thank you, I guess. Thank you. Okay, so now West can go, five, six can go. So we're in between the year hand with dragons or maybe two eight dragon. We need a red dragon if we do that though. The two eight dragon hand will not require flowers. So we're looking for, here's a three, two, three. All right, so now we have a one, two, oops, wrong, wrong way. Excuse me, so we have a two, three and dots paired up. I would let the eights go at this point and probably even the one. So I would pass one, eight, and then I would look at the rest of my tiles and, and see what can we do here. Probably a year hand, I'd say. And then maybe even let this four bam go. I don't know if we're going to be able to use this pair of dragons. With a two, three, and dots, the pair of dragons is looking, it's looking bleak for that dragon hand because we have no flowers. That would be a Kong gap. I, I don't like that level of risk. That's too, too much. We have a 1.6 potential of getting a flower from the wall, but that's not, and that's, that's, we need four, so I probably would not play that hand. So I would likely break up this pair of dragons and play the first year hand, especially now that we have a white dragon pair in there. Okay, we're all, all ready to keep going. So let's pass south five green. We'll break up that 
dragon. One thing I could do is, is try, I've not tried this, I've not attempted this before, but I could channel each playing style as an example. So you can see what it might look like through hand development. So the way I've been playing, I've been playing like a shark. So in the next game, maybe I'll play like a uh, dolphin, which is not far off from what the way I already play. So let's, let's try that. We'll test it out. And you can let me know if you find it helpful to see examples of those tendencies and characteristics of what it might look like. Let's actually, let's actually, let me try to do a poll here. Let's see here. Oh, close. oh here we go. There it is. So let's see, we're going to pass three. I'm going to try to type lightly here. Passive, a oh, fixed passive. Okay. One character. So we're playing, oh, there's a keeper. So we're looking good. Here, let's see, what do we, oh, we got the dragon back. So we have Joker bait, three discards in Joker bait and a hand with no gaps. So I'd say we're a front runner on this one. Even though we have five discards, we have Joker bait. Nobody took the Joker bait though. Fixed. Red dragon. Okay, I'm trying to get this pull going for you. West wind. Okay, then we have. West wind. Okay. And then South wind. Eight characters. Okay. Here we go. There's the pull. Let me know what you think about Good. that. I'll, uh, there's a pull for you. Two characters. Oh, someone's playing a quint. That West is wind. a red flag at the table. We're going to try to expedite hand development and thwart that hand there. They have an eight crack Six, Kong. So like numbers or the flower hand. Four bamboos. North wind. One dot. Okay. North. We don't want to hold north. North wind. Okay, so one of each of the winds is out. So my guess is they're doing the consecutive hand. Four flowers. Good thing we don't we are not playing with Two flowers. Dots. Okay, let's pung. We are playing a hand with no gaps. Pung. Six characters. I wish I could vote. Pung. Let me see. Can I vote? Six dots. Okay. We can let that go. Six bamboos. Oh, I guess I can't vote in my own poll. Pung. Three characters. Okay, we have a two crack. Oh, there's an option. Characters. We have an option here. So it looks like we have a player on the left with six, seven, six, Five seven. Dots. Now six, seven, six, seven. I or or let's see here. Four dots. This player to Nine our left, dragon. they could be a competitor for tiles over there. Nine characters. Okay, it's interesting pull so far. Three dots. Okay, that's a con. We're gonna need a joker now. We need to con that three, so we need a Five joker. Dots. Red dragon. Oh, yeah, we don't want to hold a nine. Nine dots. Let's hope they're not ready. There's a hesitation. 
Oh, Kong. Okay, so that's going to limit flower. That's going to limit their their options here. They need if they're. I'm pretty sure they're playing that nine seven, eight, bamboo. or eight, nine. They threw a nine bam, so they're flower. playing with sevens. And this player on the left, I think they're doing six, seven, six, seven. So I think they have a competitor for sevens. So I don't feel as, as flower. concerned about the quint hand. They did not take the flower. There are three flowers out. They must have Nine their characters. flowers. So all they really need, if I'm, if I'm right, Six is characters. sevens. Here's our Joker exchange. Eight characters. Okay, so the dragon Green can dragon. go. Where we need to Kong the white and Kong the three. Three characters. So we still need one more good pick if we're going to make this work. Two characters. Okay. Let's go ahead and let's see here. Let's go ahead and pump. Hmm. Might as well. We're at 64 tiles. Green dragon. Okay. Now we have a two bam pair. Wow. Nobody's going to want these two bams. So we can con with the white dragon or the three, and then we need a good pick. Green bamboo. We need a good pick out of the wall here. Three bamboos. Oh, well, south. South wind. So north, south, out, east. Where's Green the west? Dragon. You know what? Oh, there it is. One east and one west. Three characters. They could be playing an east-west quint. Green bamboos maybe east or west with an Six eight dots. because they threw a nine they threw the flowers they could still be doing nine the east characters. and east or west quint two dots. since we're not seeing any more east and west they may have east Four and west bamboos. okay nine bam was thrown nine bamboo so their options are really dwindling are there any nine cracks out or no no not nine cracks. Seven dots. Oh, no hesitation on the seven One dot. One bamboo. Okay, so my guess is they're competing for sevens. Four bamboos. I could be wrong, but that's my guess. One character. Seven bamboos. Kong. Okay. Two bamboos. Oh, yeah, we're good there. Okay, five bam. None are out, so let's let that go. Five bamboos. Over here to the right. They play in a five, seven, nine hand. West wind. If they are, it's going to be tough because everybody seems to want sevens flower. except for us. Okay, now there goes a flower from in their hand. Maybe they are playing that One flower bam. hand. Eight bam. Oh, that's going to be risky. Two bamboos. That eight bam is going to be risky. We're going into the end game now. One character. That eight, eight bam could be their tile. One bamboo. Oh, no. Well, we're not ready to win Seven yet. Seven bamboos. Oh, they got their joker back. Four dots. One dot, one dot. Nobody wants that one dot. Two bam is out also. One dot. Oh, I want somebody to throw an eight bam. Nine bamboo. Somebody needs to throw an eight bam. Four dots. Hmm, huh, that's weird. Five characters. Five bamboo. Okay, this eight bam is making me a little bit nervous here. Come. Uh, Okay, five seven nine mixuit kongs. Six characters. Five seven nine mixuit kongs. Four characters. Third hand down on the right. How many flowers are Four out? Bamboos. Five. Five flowers are out. Nine bamboo. Thirty one tiles remaining. We may fold. When there's seven a dots. When there's a quint at the table. West wind. Okay, they threw the west. They could be playing Seven dots. east quint. East east and eight. Three characters. The eight bam. They threw a west. Did you see that? Four dots. 
I think they need that eighth am. So this is where One we maneuver against them. Now, this player, no. my guess is this player is either a shark. Oh, my goodness. Since we have that eight, I'm going to I'm gonna risk it. Eight bamboo. There's the shark in me. They didn't take it. Okay, so maybe they're doing. Eight bamboos. Okay, so see, they were holding an eight, too. Oh, my gosh. Wow. They folded. Maybe they may have folded because Two of this bamboos. player on the left. Okay, that green dragon Eight should bamboos. be. That green dragon is safe. Since we drew that One eight man, dot. we had two. My thought is they don't have near enough jokers. Eight yep, they folded. Three bamboos. Okay, nobody wants this red two dragon. Bamboos. Okay, we still have potential to win here. five characters we have three more picks and Four two discards characters. we have to have a keeper out of this wall though five characters we need a keeper that would do it red dragon all right we have potential to win north wind Four characters. Now, if people are switching to defense here, Eight they may dots. be blocking us. Quint. Eight dot. I thought they needed an eight band. I don't know why I was so focused on the eight band. So they need an east. Aha. We have our winner. East, east and east and eights. Okay, so here we have six seven, six seven. Here we have uh, Quint with East and Eights. Over here, 579 uh, five, Mixu Kongs, but they needed a Joker and they have an East risky tile. And we're one away from ready. All right, let's play again. Okay, so I cannot tell. I don't know why. Oh, there we go. All right, so the, the I'm going to keep this poll going. Zero Stingrays. Fixed passive player, Orca, fixed assertive, 10%. Dolphin, adaptive passive, 40%. Shark, adaptive assertive. Wow, strong players, strong players in the live stream. Awesome. Okay, let's see how this one goes. I guess if you think about it, this is nitty gritty prime time. So I'm not surprised that we have, let's see, what was it? Orcas and sharks, dolphins and sharks, adaptive. Oh, I guess I am a little bit surprised that there aren't more orcas in the room. Uh, so we have adaptive players at the table. That's good to hear. I like that. Okay, so we have an eight dot pair. Eight up pair. Here's east west eight nine. We might be able to do a run with the nine. Six seven eight nine looks pretty good to me though. Six seven eight nine leverage consecutive run. We're gonna streamline here. Let's see three four one. That's kind of risky. Let's see two four three four two five four three. Let's do one of each suit and we'll keep it on the low side here. All right, this was a tough pass. Okay, eight band pair. We got an east. All right. So there we have a run, six, seven, eight, and bams. Okay, so let's pass one, three, four. Six, seven, eight, eight, nine, east and west with a run. 
Okay, let's see. You have gain. Oh, excellent. I'm glad to hear that, Deborah. Okay, here's our multiple. Eight bam pair. All right. So let's let the seven crack go. Actually, you know what? Let's try for east and west with a run. It's a little bit risky. Eight, nine, seven crack. Let's pass the nine dot. I really don't want to be stuck with an eight, nine in one suit. I really don't want to be stuck with a pair either, but oh, look, we got an eight. I mean, a West. Nice. And a seven. Oh, this worked out really well. Okay. We definitely will keep going. We have four discards. East and West with a run. Second hand down. This is looking pretty good. Looking good. We got a keeper and we have three discards or really, yeah, look right there, passing across. We squeaked by, we need a 6 p.m. That's our only weakness. So we do have a weakness, just one, but we're ready to call. We can con the eight and pung the east-west. They will likely go down in the begin game. That's usually what happens unless we have a competitor for wins. Let's see. E we're, we're the dealer. We have three discards. I'm still waiting for a hand from heaven. I've never gotten a hand from heaven. All right. Well, <laughs> we got a seven and an eight. Okay, so let's see what our opponent wants here. They want three. We can do three. We're a front runner on this one. We have a player negotiating low. The player to our right, south, wanted two tiles. So that, that is a little bit of a red flag, not major. Oh my gosh, look, we got a keeper. We have one discard. Well, we had an extra tile as, as the dealer, east. One we have bamboo. one discard. Wow. Oh, I would love to have a hand from heaven one day. One. This bamboo. was a really good result. One character. Okay, now we may have a competitor for wins Three at bamboos. the table. Typically, this is when you'll see winds go down, but they're not. So we may need another joker. North wind. Okay, there's a wind. Not much of a hesitation, though, on Eight it. Eight dots. But east and west, we could have a competitor for east-west. Four bamboos. One character. We need a six bam or joker east-west. From the wall. Four characters. One one good pick and we'll be ready to win. Five bamboos. Nine crack. We don't need that. What are Nine the chances characters. of one and how many have achieved it? I don't know. I've never seen any statistics Nine on it. Dogs. I know my mom's had a hand from heaven at least once. I remember her telling me that she had a hand from Nine heaven. Dogs. I've never had one. Four characters. All right, we need a keeper here. Eight dot is already out. Eight dots. Two dots. Red dragon. Eight characters. All right, come on now. We need a keeper. Oh, that's not it. Flower. First flower out. I always like to see the first flower out and how it's received. See if there's a hesitation or a taker on that flower. Eight characters. Flowers are kind of a, what are North they? Wind. They're an enigma. We got a keeper. All right. We're ready to Two win. bamboos. Ready to win on a six bam. South wind. I guess we can kind of prep it here. Six characters. Oh, I thought that was it. Darn. 
All right. We have a potential One for character. a pure hand even. Oh, we don't need a flower. Flower. So we're looking for a six bam to win. We're stealth mode, fully stealth mode. Seven characters. Seven dots. Okay, so Eight proximity dots. tiles are going down, which is good. So we're seeing what I mean Two by that dangers. is we're seeing sevens, eights, and nines go down. We Five need the six. Dots. Fives going down. Five, six, seven, eight in dots. Not bam so much. There's a five bam, seven, seven crack, dots. seven dot. No six bams out yet. Eight characters. Four dots. Kong. Eight characters. We're looking for a six bam to win. Seven bamboos. Oh, okay. There's a proximity tile there. Let's see if anybody else. See, nobody wanted the seven. Now this player to our right. Three characters. They could be doing a two, four, six, eight mix suit hand. They may have our six bam. Let's hope they're playing consecutive Five run. Characters. I would like I would like for them to play consecutive run. <laughs> Red dragon. I want that six bam. Four dots. Oh, they got a joker. We don't need jokers. Flower. Okay, let's see here. According to a Google post, Five chance is wins. one in every. Oh, we don't need that. West wind. A hundred and uh, eighteen thousand deals. Wow. Okay. Six dots. Okay, six dot went down with a hesitation. Six characters. Three dots. Oh, I would love to see a three four here. Three four. Oh darn! There was a hesitation though. South wind. Hi, Marilyn. Welcome. Good to see Seven you here. Dots. We're looking for a six bam to win. Green dragon. A flower. Flower. We're going into the end game. We are ready in the begin game. Five characters. We're waiting a long time for this. We could have someone East holding wind. south. Okay, so we're going to pass. We could have punged Four that. Bamboos. Although if another another east Nine goes dots. down, I think I would call it Pung. Pung, discard the Joker because they still don't know what run we have. Our run is concealed. Two dots. Now this is where I'm concerned if they Pung. Okay, they didn't Pung because I'm wondering. Let's go ahead and Pung. Pung. Nobody's gonna know our Gender. run. They're not gonna know our run. We're Two ready on a boots. we're ready on a pure hand. This is another shark trait here. Seven or bamboos. I guess you would call this a likely, a likely uh, tendency, a likely tactic. Flower. We're trying to get a pure hand here. Six bam to win. I think three now this player to our left could be playing a three, six, nine hand. I'm trying to see who might have Two sixes. Characters. This player to our right, I think, is playing evens. Green dragon. Three dots. Okay, six bam. Oh, <laughs> six dots. Six dots. Shoot. Two oh. characters. All right. Somebody has our six bam, I think. South wind. We're not giving up yet. Six dots. North wind. Two dots. Oh, my goodness. Would you guys have played a pure hand here? Seven characters. Two characters. Okay, come on now. Six bam. Oh my gosh, no. Shoot. 
six characters. Six characters. Seven characters. We're looking for a six band. Five dots. Ah, oh, one dot. One dot. The wall is teasing us. Dang it. One dot. All right, come on now. Five more picks. Five bamboos. South wind. Oh my goodness. No red dragons are out. No, two. Red dragon. We're playing to win. Red dragon. One character. Four bamboo. All right, come on. Oh. One bamboo. Oh. One dot. Yeah, Riley's running around. I left the back door open so he can go out there. I'm hoping he'll go out Three and get some characters. fresh air. Five dots. All right. Two this is bamboos. his dinner time, though, so he's anxiously awaiting his food. Three characters. All right. I think we have people holding our six bam. Five bamboos. Oh, shoot. North wind. Joker. Oh, boy. That's an indication of a fold. Joker. Another fold. Nine bamboos. Come on, six bam. A seven dot. Seven Shoot. dots. Oh, so much promise. Four bamboos. So much promise. Joker. It's not a guarantee. Yeah, six bam. We have folds at the table. This is where. When I was talking about the maneuvers against a shark is a is a, a fold, an early fold. Although I don't think that these players folded early, but this player right here, it looks like they folded a while ago because look at their tiles. They folded early. I think when maybe when we, it could have been when we, we exposed the east and discarded that joker that may have created that decision to fold this player here they were playing a year hand with dragons they might have folded early also and then this player three six nine hand they have our sixes they were trying for three six nine single pair pong kong kong uh fifth hand down under three six nine they might have been still playing plan to win maybe all right here we go okay <laughs> darn it oh oops all right well let's see you fold you live to fight another day we somehow did not get in on that table all right, here we go. Okay. And we're off. Let's see if we can get a strong deal. We have a joker. We have a pair of flowers. Okay, but we have a, a widespread everywhere else. So let's focus on number tiles. Our predominant pattern is four, five, six. So we're going to streamline here. Four, five, six. We have like number like numbers with four fours potentially in there. Let's pass the two. We do have some two, four, six, eight in here. No eight, though. That's a gap. Let's see. Let's see if we can get an eight. Because we could maybe play that fourth hand down under evens. Or we could do four, five, six of some kind. Maybe like numbers with fours. Whatever we do, we're going to use flowers. 
So really that that even hand, not good. We don't want to play evens. No, we're not playing evens. There are flower hands in there, but they're one suit for evens with flowers. So we're going to focus on four, five, six, or maybe like numbers. Okay, so now we have a pair of red dragons. Let's let the nine go with the two dot. All right, here we go. We need a keeper here. Number tile. Let's see. I'm trying to think what else we could do here. Here's another. Here's a six and an eight. We really want to focus on these flowers, though. All right, so let's pass the west and the red. We're not going to be able to use that drag. Oh, wait a minute. Here's a mm, four, six. I guess we could optimize for four, five, or maybe something consecutive with these with the dragons. We do have four, five, six mixed suit. Let's see about maybe like numbers. Oh, okay. We need a good deciding tile. Fours or a five, six. Oh, there's a dragon. Oh my gosh. We need a good tile for the four, six here. We definitely want to keep going. We have a pung of red dragons. What are we going to do with a pung of red dragons? And a pair of flowers. Really, the only way to use that with what we have would be consecutive run with the four or the six. We need like a three, five, seven in here. Three, five, seven for a itty bitty run, a mini run. Oh, okay. So here's, all right, let's sort. All right, we have three, four, five, four, six, four, six dragon. Oh my gosh, this is crazy. What are we doing here? Three, four, five, three, four, six, six, four, five, six, six. Okay, there's a little bit of something there. Uh, let's see here. So let's let's let one of the dragons go. We do have a hand in here, four, five, six, six. We could maybe still do five, something with the six crack. All right, now there's something, a little something. Oh my goodness. All right, now let's see here. Four crack, red dragon, pair of flowers. We're playing a gap hand right now. Like numbers with fours. Four, five, six, six is super weak. Let's let the six crack go. Mm. Oh, goodness. One and a seven. This is no good. Okay, so we're going to, let's see how many our opponent wants. We're going to be an underdog on this one. We're going to have to draw really well in the beginning game. First wall, we need to, the first five picks, we need to draw really well. All right, so let's do one with a west. One with a west. Okay, so we need to watch these first five picks from the wall. We need to try to get some keepers in that really early game. All right, here we have five, six, seven, five. We still have seven a pretty wins. decent Boom. pattern here. We got skipped. Four, five, One six, character. seven we have. But this pair Eight of red characters. dragons, not really that helpful. One bamboo. All right, so now let's see here. There's some, there's some 579 developing here. Today's Four your dots. day for, oh no. There's, there, it's automated. I'm sorry, Marilyn. One bamboo. Okay. 
uh, 8 BAM, 9 BAM, our, our multiple is with the 4. So we need to focus nine on the 4s. Focus on the 4s. West wind. Green dragon, four characters. Oh, that's our tile. We're playing a gap hand. We're not taking that. Not until we get some help in here. Three, four, five, four, five, six. We just need to reassess, Eight I think. Eight bamboos. We are reassessing here. All right, we have three, four, five, six, seven. That's too much. That seven bamboos. can go. Oh, really interesting. I wonder if YouTube is pushing ads or Rent something. Wind. Okay, so we have three, four, five, five, six, four. Nine characters. We have one discard. We really don't have to pick anything yet. Okay, here's a six and a seven. We really don't need the seven. Seven dots. So we have three, four, three, four, five, four, six red. No. Five characters. This can go. Okay, now five crack Seven just dots. went down. Four crack, five crack are out. I'm thinking. Green dragon. Okay, east we definitely don't need. East wind. Oh, Anne, I'm sorry. Let me just double check on YouTube. Hold five on. Five dots. What's going on with YouTube? I don't know why that would be different. I didn't do anything different about One my character. settings or anything. I'm not sure. Maybe they're maybe they've changed their one process. Dot. I don't know. All right, come on now. We need some keepers. Okay, finally. Woo! Jeez. Okay, so here now we have four, five, six dragon. Okay. Wow. Two okay, dots. 76 tiles. So we're one pick short of that first five picks. So we we are in two characters. We were able to recover by the end of that second wall. Seven characters. I still think. Okay, now there's a joker. All right. Five so dots. we are kind of probably trailing a little behind. I'd say we're a contender now. We started out. Five dots. We're, we started out as an underdog for sure. Seven characters. Let's see. So there's a five crack out. Eight. Dots. Really, that six crack can go. Let's see, three, four, three, four, five, six, three. Let's just let that go three there. Bamboos. Four, five dragon is what I think I would play if I were playing this in real life. Well, this is real life. Of course it's real life. We're not living in the matrix. This is real life, right? Flower. Okay, no, we're not taking that. We just need a pair. Third hand down under consecutive run. One dot. Okay, we're going to need to continue to draw well. We can't do a whole lot right now. Six characters. We do have some potential to go switch back to like numbers. Two characters. There's a four dot out and a four crack out. Flower. So we need to watch fours. We need to watch for fours. Flower. Pass. A green dragon. Six dots. All right. Green dragon. I'm kind of thinking. Four dots. I'm kind of thinking we might need to switch to like numbers flowers. with fours and maybe leverage these flowers. That would be three keepers. Eight dots. We can define the joker as a four. Seven bamboos. Four dots. The fours are just going down hard. Core, hardcore. Jeez. So we would need jokers. Nine dots. Mm, yikes. That's a yikes. Five characters. Oh, and there goes the five crack. Oh, six crack. Five bamboos. Five cracks are going down. Two are down. Two characters. Three, four dots are down. Green dragon. There's one more four dot, though. One more four dot, right? Yes. Three dots. 
Kong. Okay. Six bamboo. North and south with a run. Yep, I got an add to. I just click skip. Three dots. Although it does help my channel if you watch the ad, which One I'm grateful dragon. for. I'm grateful. Oh my goodness. All right. Six characters. Oh. We'll undefine that. Okay. Eight characters. Well, it's a pretty one character. It's a pretty hand. No red dragons are out yet. One bamboo. Okay, let's let the dragons go. White dragon. I love dragons. They're pretty. Four dots. Yeah, four dots just really seven dots. Took the like number hand out of the options. So we're doing four, four or five dragon. We're going to need a uh, joker Green for the dragon. five. Let's see here. Two four bamboos. crack. One is out. There's one uh, one more five crack. We can Kong. We need a joker Eight for dots. the four crack. We need a joker. Maybe we can get this three over here. Joker. Oh, no. Oh, and there's a four crack, Eight a four bam. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> One what character. in the uh, three dots? Oh, they got it. And a mahjong. All right. Well, at least it's not pure. All right. Well done, Joe. Okay. So Joe got north and south with a run and nearly pure. Here we have two. Oh, pair hand. They were waiting probably for a five bam. I think they wanted a pair hand, consecutive pair hand. Over here, five, let's see, what do we have? This player maybe like numbers with nines, but they couldn't get flowers or three, six, nine, but couldn't get threes. And here, of course, we were trying for four or five dragon. Okay, so let's play again. All right, next game. Okay, what do we got? We've got a four or five. We're, we're being stocked by cracks here. Okay, so let's see. We'll let the south go with a three and a nine. We have one, four, five, six, nine. We might be able to do a three, six, nine hand. It's not my favorite category because it is so limited, but there is some three, six, nine in here. We do have four, five, six dragon again <laughs> maybe we can maybe we can redeem ourselves with the dragon hand oh and then we get a one two west all right okay west let's do one with a three okay so maybe Something consecutive. Oh, I was trying to keep the three for three, six, nine, but that's okay. I think we have a stronger potential for consecutive run four, five, six. Oh, and then we get an eight, nine. All right. And here's a two, eight, nine. Dragon. A dragon. Okay, let's see. I think the dragon can go. So we have four, five, six, eight. Let's let the nine go. Four, five, six, eight, and a two, and an eight. I think the eight dot can go too. All right, we're not making any movement yet. First Charleston was, we really, we had one keeper sort of, but we, we need to see if we can advance some hand development here. <laughs> in this second round all right there we go there's a little bit of help maybe three crack three four five six so that's where i would focus three four five six 
Okay, we definitely want to keep going. Don't you even think about it, Riley. Don't you dare. Just be quiet. Okay, let's see. Let's do nine with a two. No, stop. Okay, that must be Dudley out there. Stinking Dudley. This is Dudley, by the way, if you're wondering. And this is my Riley right there. Dudley is his nemesis. Okay, we have a six BM and ones. All right. Well, it seems like somebody wants us to play little numbers. All right, let's do here's a six eight four five six eight six BM. I think that can go. Let's let the one dot go. All right. Oh goodness. This we're gonna basically be starting fresh from the pick. Pick and discard phase of the game. We're starting fresh because this this has not been a very fruitful round of passing here. Don't even think about it, Riley. No. Okay, we have a nine. Oh, I feel like we're we're getting scraps right here. This one one bam is really not helpful at all. The two bam not helpful really either. The dragon. That's not helpful either. Oh my goodness. Nine crack. Oh, we ended up with a multiple. What do you know? Right there. Nine crack. All right. All right. So now three, four, five, six, eight, nine. Nine crack pair. I would I would just reassess completely here. Maybe we can do a three, six, nine hand, eight, nine dragon, maybe. They want three. I would not pass one, two, five. Let's see. We have six, eight, nine there. Okay. I think we should pass fully. There's five, six, eight, nine. One can go maybe the five with a four, let's say. Four, five. We have a nine crack pair. That should be our focus right there. Nine crack pair. Three six nine would not use a red dragon. The dragon hands in three six nine are opposite. Okay, so we have a six Green nine. Dragon. So it seems that okay. Let's see. Let's let the two go. Two bamboo. It seems that we have eight done. Maybe a three six nine hand in here, but it's not gelling yet. So we gather one bamboo. We're just gonna keep gathering we're in gather gather mode here we definitely don't need wins east wind nine bamboos nope we're not calling that we don't even know what hand we're playing yet three six nine of some kind six characters yep two of our tiles just went down well we don't know yet we might still be able to make this work eight bamboos a flower. We got a flower. Two dots. Eight, nine dragon. We could maybe play eight, nine dragon, third hand down under consecutive run. Seven bamboos. Four bamboos. Eight characters. No, we're not ready for that. Oh, okay. Nine crack. White dragon. All right. So either. Oh my goodness, three, six, nine in one suit or eight, Seven nine dragon. Characters. So, really, the six, nine bam, bams can go. Five bamboos. The bams can go. I think the five can go. Seven bamboos. White dragon is out. White dragon. So, we're playing maybe three, six, nine with flowers. This is the, which Seven hand bamboos. is this? Uh, third, Six second hand characters. down. Oh, we would need a pair there, and that's the second one. So it's getting a bit tight with the six crack. So Red that dragon. that's kind of, no, nope, we are not ready for that. Okay, here's a three. Let's let the nine bam go. Nine bam. We have three, six, nine, but there are two six cracks out. 
Let's see here. Four characters. This is going to be risky. We need that six crack. South wind. Three, six, nine in one suit. We need a pair of sixes. Three, bam. Three, six. Five crack can go. All right. Five so characters. here's another thing we could do. Three, six, six, nine, pong, 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 pong. We could maybe switch to the Pong Kong hand. Dragon. If the six crack goes down, we could Pong, I suppose. White Dragon. I'd rather draw it, though. Okay, let's let the eight crack, red dragon, let's let the four go. Four characters. We could still play eight, nine dragon. Seven bamboos. One dot. Oh my goodness. Come on now. We need that six. Six bamboo. Six crack we want. Well, we're not taking the six bam. Two dot. Don't need it. Two dots. Okay, now six bam. One is out. Three bam. None are out. Five bamboo. We might be able to switch to three, three, six, nine. Pung Kong, Pung Kong. In bams and cracks, maybe. I would love to draw that six crack though and play three, six, nine in one suit. It's a tough nine category. Characters. We have to make a choice. I think we should go ahead and Kong Pong. and then let the, let's see, let's let the three bam go. Three bamboos. We can still maybe switch to eight, nine dragon. The six crack is one what dot. I'm I'm hesitating about because there's, there's only one Eight left. Dots. We need that six crack very badly. If we call hmm. the three crack, we're going to put ourselves at risk six for disqualification. Bamboos. Flower. Six bamboo. Well, we definitely needed that. Now we're, we're at a place where it's getting a little bit better, but it's still very risky waiting on a pair. Seven characters. Yikes. Two bamboo. We need that six crack. Oh, oh. six bamboo. Okay. One crack. Oh, my goodness. One character. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> one dot. Okay. Flower. Oh my. Okay, let's Kong. Kong. We're just going to go for it. Red dragon. This is the shark in me. I just am going to push. We're still in the middle game. One bamboo. But this is very risky. If that six crack goes Seven down, bamboos. we're going to need to switch to defense. Flower. Oh, that was interesting. Too late. Eight characters. Maybe someone will take it with a joker. Darn. Eight bamboos. Oh, my goodness. Four bamboos. Oh, my goodness. Come on now. We need a keeper out of this Eight wall. Eight characters. Joker flower keeper. Nice. We got Eight it. Oh, characters. my gosh. All right. Now, whew, we're ready to win on the six crack. Now, it could look Eight like that wins. we're playing like numbers with nines here. Let's see. What hmm. else could we be doing here? Three, three of course, three, six, nine mixed or three, six, nine in one suit. Hmm. So this could be one of three different hands here. Yeah, we were right Two in the bamboos. edge. We were on the edge for this one. There's only one, one more six crack. Two dots. Okay. This is going to be telling for anyone who's paying attention. Nine dots. Anybody notice that nine dot? Because that would be an indicator that we're not playing like numbers. Five bamboos. One character. Okay. So with a nine crack Kong and a Kong of flowers, they're going to know we're playing three, three six, nine. We're not going to call that because we don't want to spook the table. We could have maybe pushed for a pure hand, but I want to make it seem like it's kind of a bluff. 
we want it to seem like we're not ready to win. Dragon. Not ready to win with that three crack. South wind. How many six bands are out? Four. How many six dots are out? Red dragon. I don't see any six dots. I'm, I'm just trying to figure out what others are. Oh, there it is. Doesn't matter. We got it. Mahjong. Woohoo! Oh, man. We had to work hard for that one. So the six dots were over in our opponent's hand on the left here, right there. Here's the six dots, six, seven, eight, nine, Pung Kong. Over here, we have news, pair of five dots. That, that's a risky pair right there. One, three, one, two, three, three. Whoa, they needed flowers. All right, let's play one more game. One more game. Oh, man, that one was a really, boy, oh, boy, we were on thin ice on that one. That was exciting. Oh, thank you, JL. <laughs> okay, hold on a second. I have something for you. You ready? Uh oh All right. Here we go. We're going to keep going. We're going to play one more game. Thanks for taking the poll. That's an interesting, interesting spread there. Stingray, fixed passive is the Stingray, 6%. Orca, fixed assertive, 6%. Dolphin, adaptive passive, 28%. Sharks, adaptive, assertive. Uh -huh. We've got sharks in the room. All right, that's enough. We're waiting. It's not like there's anything more we can do while we're waiting. There we go. All right, no more shenanigans. We're going to focus. Last game. Thanks for coming to the live stream. Okay, here we go. We have a white dragon pair and a three bam pair. So that's where we're going to start. We could maybe try for a year hand, or we can do three, four of some kind. Three, four. We have no five, so I don't think I would focus on a one, three, five hand. So let's start there. Let's see here. Let's do six. Let's see. We have three, three. Well, we do have some three, six, nine in here, but it's really not. Let's see here. Three, nine with a six. That's really not the right six. We would need a six dot if we're going to play a three, six, nine knitted hand. Three, six, nine knitted second hand from the bottom. We could use the three bam and the white dragon, but it's not really gelling. So here's a four, three, four. South can go nine dot and the one. I think three, six, nine is out. Here's a one though. One, two, three, four. Year hand. Now that we have a three, four, I don't think I would focus on a year hand. We do have a hand in here with no gaps. Three, four, three, four. Six hand down under consecutive run. Okay. Uh, one, two, three, four. Another hand. Another hand we could play. One, two, three, four. <clears throat> Excuse me. We also do still have in here a little bit of a year hand potential, but we need a two bam, really. We would need a two bam to play the first hand. All right. Uh, let's see. We have a three, four, five dragon. I don't think I would. 
I don't think I would keep the dragon because we have no flowers. We're going to let the five go. This is just a little bit risky, but we're, we're focused on the three, four, and bams. Three, four, and bams. Okay, we have a one. We really don't need that. One, no. We have a gap, no two. So one, two, and dots with a three, four, or three, four, three, four. Pung, kong, pung, kong. Two hands, the least resistance. The, the white dragons, I don't think, are going to be helpful. Okay. These big numbers are going around. We only got one little number. The four BAM, I think, is what we got. I remember, right? Okay, fully passing fully here. Where are we? I wish it would like have text on here saying which pass we're on because I forget. I forget what pass we're on. Oh, we got a keeper. Okay, one, two, three, four. Nice. Right there. One, two, three, four. They want three. We can do three. We have these right here we can let go of. Eight, three with an east. One, two, three, four, pung, kong, pung, kong. Three multiples. So this turned out all right. We have four discards and joker bait. So we're an underdog. We're an underdog, but we are playing a hand of least resistance. So I think there's, if we draw well in the first win. five picks, we might be okay. When's we win. are an underdog for this one. Because we have... Four discards and, and Joker bait. Even with the Joker bait, that's six discards. Eight that's a bucks. lot. That is a lot of discards right there. Nine bamboos. All right. We can let that go. And there's another Nine little bamboos. bit of Joker bait here. Four crack. So we have two, two bits. Two bits. I think I would let the dragons go East first. Wind. South wind. Okay, nines can go. Nine characters. Looks like nobody wants nines. North wind. Oh. Interesting. There are two souths out and then a north with a hesitation. North wind. Well, there it is. So I think winds are going to go down. Eight characters. Okay, we don't need the nine. Nine dots. Nine dots. Okay, come on now. We need a we need keepers. Four dots. Nope, that's not our tile, but there's a hesitation on that four. White dragon. White two dragon. Bamboos. We're 82, 80 tiles. All right. So we're now Seven through characters. the that first wall, the begin game, or sorry, second wall, begin game. We're white definitely dragon. an underdog. Okay, there's the white dragon. Nobody wanted it. I would then, oops, we're going to discard Two those now. characters. Okay, so the white dragons will go next. One character. Nobody wanted them. Kong. Oh, we got skipped. It's helpful if Three you can dots. get a turn from the wall here. We need to be able to pick. We need our tiles from the wall. Seven characters. White dragon. Okay, so now one bamboo. We have Joker bait with the four. Three dots. One, two, three, four is what we're playing. Second hand down on the right under consecutive run. We can call for two of our blocks. Three bam. One dot in the three bam. Let's pong. We have a hand Pung. with no gaps. Yeah, one it does dragon. seem like there are a lot of uh, ads today. Because I just Two got characters. another ad. That is weird. I wonder, I wonder if they've changed some things or something. I don't know. One bamboo. All right. Anyway. Oh, white dragon. White dragon. Oh, geez. South wind. Okay. So we have three discards in Joker bait. Five bamboo. So we inched ourselves forward with this one exposure there. Pung Kong, Pung Kong. 
eight characters. We need keepers in here. Oh, three bam. No. Three bamboos. Oh, goodness. Nine bamboos. All right. Three dots. No. Uh, okay, we need keepers. We're at 62 tiles. We're in the middle of the game here. Here, so we need we need keepers. Three characters. Middle of the game right now. Oh, seven bam. Eight. Let's let the eight go. Okay. Eight you, characters. Uh, so Marilyn says I've had six in the last hour. Oh. Five characters. Oh, okay. Yeah, I don't know. Kong. One five. Red oh, dragon. they need three crack pairs. Three crack pair in the middle Two here. Dots. There's one three crack out. Seven bamboos. Okay, so we have a player who's who's risking something unless Nine they dots. they may already have their pair of threes. They're playing Eight one three dots. five. They need Kong of Flowers and a pair of threes. They're playing seven. They're dots. playing. Oh, and they need a pair of red dragons too. So they're playing the fourth hand down under odds. One three five one, dragon. One three five dragon. One bamboo. West wind. All right, come on now. Oh, four crack. Seven. Typically, dots. if you get a pong. Come that on. really weakens the the power of Joker bait. East wind. It is highly unlikely that someone would want the four crack. So they had their pairs. They just drew a flower. All right. Well, that's a very nice hand. Thankfully, it's not pure. So well done. Over here we have a. Let's see here. Six. Six seven. See now here's someone who this would be an or an example of an orca because they do not have flowers so they're they're low risk tolerance but boy they they really are pushing it they're trying for six seven eight mixed suit kongs but they have no flowers that's an indicator of an assertive player but a shark typically wouldn't take that kind of a risk because they would know not to push it without that at least one flower in the hand. Uh, so here we have three, four, five, four, five, fives, three, five, like numbers with fives. They're playing adaptive. They're this Joe is probably a shark. <laughs> that's my guess. All right. I think that's going to do it for this live stream. Thank you uh, so much for joining me on this live stream. I hope you enjoyed the presentation. If you missed the first part of this episode, watch the repost because we talked about game theory profiling players where you try to identify the playing style of your opponent in order to help you gather intel so that you can gain a competitive advantage at the table. It's an interesting concept adopted from poker psychology let me know what you think about it and we'll continue the conversation this will be on the recurring list of skills that we'll cover on nitty-gritty prime time you're welcome thank you so much again for coming thank you for sharing about my channel with your friends i appreciate it also, moderators, thank you again for helping monitor the chat today. We'll be back again for the Obsessed Let's Play live stream on Tuesday. I mean, sorry, not Tuesday, Wednesday. Then we'll be back for Wright Patterson Mahjong on Wednesday. Both of those will be one to three. And then we'll play in the Simply Social Let's Play live stream on Friday night at 6 p.m. Eastern time. So I hope to see you again then. Also, I just thought I would share really quick my, uh, let's see, let's go to the nitty gritty schedule, skills and strategies matrix. Let me pull that up real quick and we can see what the topic is for next Monday. 
so you can see what we have to look forward to. So let me share my screen and we'll take a peek at that. that. Present. Share. Here we go. All right. So we're going to go to March Life and then we're going to go to the wiki. And we're going to look up matrix. This is where you can see the schedule of recurring topics right here. So next, we're going to do for the nitty gritty basics will be test your instincts and nitty gritty prime time will be a new, a new focus, a new topic, big hands. You've not seen this yet unless you were part of the obsessed Let's Play Live, um, obsessed Let's Play Live stream. So there'll be new content next week for nitty gritty prime time. All right. Does anybody have any questions? Write them in the comments section below. <laughs> Marilyn. Oh, my gosh. That's funny. Well, not really, but it's part, it's kind of, I mean, we have a, a wonderful opportunity to learn through the platform. And if that means watching a few ads, I think it's worth it. I, I think it's worth it myself. I spent all my time on YouTube, pretty much. YouTube and Netflix, that's it. So if you consider that your entertainment or your source of information, education, hobbies, things like that, then it is worth it, I think. Just my opinion. Oh, thank you, Marilyn. Plus, creators, it gives creators a way to get some compensation for their time and all the content that they create because it, it takes a lot of time and effort. So I do hope that you appreciate it. And I know I do. And I appreciate you watching my videos because it certainly wouldn't be what it is today without you. If you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed to my channel, consider subscribing. Click the little gray bell if you do. That way you'll get notification for when I post new videos and you won't miss an opportunity to learn a new strategy or pick up an insight to the game that could give you an advantage at the table. Between now and the next video, may all your picks be keepers.